Hi guys, Vex here! Welcome to uh, the start of a new video series where I talk about D&D stuff. Namely, my house rules, my methodologies when I DM, just the way I handle things. I've got a lot to say about D&D, and I reckon that at least some of you probably want to hear it. Okay, uh, this video is about how I handle armies of units clashing on my world map, and how player characters can interact with those armies. So, you might know Matt Koval's Strongholds and Followers rule supplement. Uh, he's going to have Kingdoms of Warfare coming out. I love Matt Koval. But uh, personally, I, I was looking for myself a really simple and really fast way to resolve armies. So the first thing is all these uh, little circles represent an army of 100 dudes of that type. So an army of 100 human soldiers. What we got over here? Human wizard, army of 100 wizards. Cool. Uh, 100 knights. Awesome. So let's say there's uh, two armies fight each other. Well, what happens? Okay, this is really easy. Uh, let's grab some orc here. All right, so there's orcs, and the orcs are engaging the human soldiers. Uh, let's say, for example, they're out on an open grassy field. Uh, they fight each other. So the first thing is you look to see if either of them have any ranged options, which would let them get a first hit in on the enemy. So the human soldiers have heavy crossbow. Okay. And the orcs have, what do they got? Javelins. Uh, 120 range versus 400 range. Okay, so the humans definitely get in a first first hit. So the armies are approaching each other, and uh, the human army attacks the orc army. Okay, a 20. Uh, I'm going to move these to my second monitor so that they get out my way, but I can still run the sheets. So the humans get the first shot in. That's a hit. Uh, it was six damage. Okay, now the armies are at each other. And from now on, they attack simultaneously. So you roll their stuff and resolve the effects at the same time. So the human soldiers go to melee, and the orcs swing the great axe, and the humans attack with long swords. The orcs hit the humans for seven damage at the exact same time. The humans hit the orcs for four damage. And that represents the ability for an army, even if it gets killed in one shot, it still gets its one attack in, at least. If it if it has two attacks, you make two attacks. You basically just use the abilities that the sheet has to represent how well it's doing. It's, it's basically an abstraction of 100 of these dudes fight 100 of these dudes. It's almost like 100 one versus one battles, sort of. It's quick and dirty enough for my purposes. Okay, so they're still fighting, and they, they attack again simultaneously. The humans are hit for 13, and the orcs are hit for... Okay, uh, an 8 misses. All right, and the orcs attack again, and the humans attack again. All right, an 8 misses the orcs, uh, a 15 misses the humans, and they attack again, and they attack again. All right, uh, that's a miss on both accounts. Jeez, guys, come on. I'm trying to make a video here. Can you hurry this up? Oh, there we go. Thanks. All right. Okay, so uh, Grumpsh turns away from the orcs, and they crit fail, and then uh, the humans critical hit and do 11 damage to the orcish army. Uh, they're cut down to a man, or an orc in this case. The orcish army is destroyed. The humans uh, limp back to Pura and toast to the many brave human soldiers that died in the fight against the orcs. So if there's, you know, 10 out of 30 HP is they got like 33% of their HP. Out of 100 dudes, about 33 of them make it back to Pura. All right, so that is how you resolve token-to-token -to -token combat. You determine if either side gets a first strike in on the other. If so, resolve that. They close, then they basically just swing at each other simultaneously. Don't worry about initiative until, you know, one of them, either you decide that they would retreat or they would just, uh, you know, kill each other off, whatever. Okay, so fortifications, castles and stuff. All right, so Pura here is a little village. Basically doesn't even have any walls at all. Let's go look at Merrick's Bend. So this is tier zero. Merrick's Bend is going to be a tier one because it's got a wall. And if you look over here at Jinton, and these are very loose categories, right? They're designed for speed, flexibility, and ease of use. This would be tier, tier two. You could think of them as no defenses, light defenses, heavy defenses, purpose-built defenses. So just a collection of random buildings, uh, basically no defenses, uh, a, a decent wall, like a wood wall, a palisade wall of some kind, and then maybe stone fortifications, uh, proper worked earth fortifications, arrow loops, murder holes, boiling oil to dump on people, uh, kill boxes, gatehouses with slits for spears to stab through to, to kill the people that are coming in. Uh, all right, so that's tier zero, one, two. What do they mean? Okay, so tier zero, you may as well be in a, a flat grassy field. There's basically no advantage here to be found. 
Uh, the tier one stuff. Attackers, when they attack the defenders of a tier one settlement, have disadvantage on their attack rolls. This represents an abstraction of it being harder to kill a bunch of people when they're hiding behind a wood wall. Simple. Okay, what about the tier two? Well, the attacker, uh, let's say this human soldier, they rebel and they come to attack these guys in Jinton. Well, what happens? Okay, well, he's already got disadvantage on his attack roll, but then what are the, what's the tier two give? Well, when they counterattack and hit him back, they have advantage on their attack roll. Uh, that reflects that uh, heavy defenses might have ballista, trebuchets, catapults sitting on top of the walls. Uh, like I said, uh, boiling oil, uh, moats, spikes, traps, uh, all sorts of stuff that would make counterattacking and invading enemy more damaging and deadly. Yeah, uh, so to recap real quick, the tokens attack each other simultaneously. You look for the first hit on an enemy if they have a ranged option. Uh, tier 0, no change from a grassy field. Uh, tier 1, defenders are attacked with disadvantage. And Tier 2, the defenders attack with advantage. So, what happens when a player character interacts with a token, uh, an army token? Alright, so... Uh, Maphelin is being attacked by the forces of the undead. Lucrehaven has fallen to the undead armies, so it's it's a real mess up here. But for simplicity, let's say Tylee, let's say she's had enough of helping humanity, and she's like, man, these human soldiers, screw these guys. Again, you look for a first hit option. Tylee is a, is a mage. Uh, she's a wizard, a necromancer wizard, actually. So she is absolutely going to have a first hit. She's got lightning bolt. Uh, she's got fly, haste. Uh, the way I resolve this is you just calculate up the damage dealt and divide it by 100 uh, based on how many people it would hit. So let's say Tylee uh, whips out her dagger. Does she have a dagger on her sheet? Yeah, she does. Okay, thank you, Tylee. Oh my god, she crit. So Tylee swings at the human soldiers and deals 12 damage. Uh, 12 divided by 100 is 0.12. And you round up, so Tylee inflicted one damage to the army with her dagger. Then the human soldiers attack her. Now what happens? Well, all 100 human soldiers cannot really engage Tylee very effectively. She is just one person. What happens? If you imagine the human soldiers in a grid formation, a 10 by 10 grid, on an edge there's 10 soldiers. They attack Tylee, and the ones behind them take the help action. So 10 soldiers attack Tylee. The ones behind them take the help action, so they attack her with advantage. And the human soldiers uh, try to dogpile on her with their long swords. They just come in and whack. Ten human soldiers attack Tylee. Her AC is 17, and ten of them are attacking with advantage. So we look at the highest of these two numbers. Well, they roll the exact same, so it's a moot point. And ten times nine is 90 slashing damage. And Tylee takes 90 damage from these human soldiers. You could say Tylee flies up in the air then maybe they'll switch to their heavy crossbow. Um, if they have no ranged option, you can maybe say the human soldiers, okay, uh, they scatter because they understand that Tylee's a wizard and she's flying, and they have no way to attack her, and they just like scatter in all directions and she can't effectively attack them. At that point, you might roll a percentile dice to just see how many she hunts down and figure out, on a special case like that, you might want to just figure out roughly how much damage she does. Maybe you give the mage like a chance, like, okay, cast two spells at these guys before they completely scatter and flee, and we'll see how many you kill as they run off. Something like that. As you can see, just a wizard fighting a hundred dudes is still really dangerous, even though the wizard is level like 18. But that, that's basically how it works. Let's say she takes out her fireball, though, and blasts them. Well, if it's a grid of, 100, of 10 by 10 dudes, uh, each it's 10 times 5, it's a uh, 50 by 50 thing. So each guy represents 25 square feet of space. And the fireball is a 20 by 20, uh, let's say roughly. That's 400 square feet. So you're nuking like 400 square feet of dudes. And that's basically 16 guys. So you calculate the area of the AoE. You determine how many dudes it would hit. And she blasts the army with a fireball. Blah! Okay, 26. So the human soldiers deck save as a group. They fail. So 16 of them take 26 fire damage. Uh, 416 fire damage divided by 100 dudes, or the army size of 100 dudes, is rounded up 5. So her fireball deals 5 damage to this army of 100 guys. You see how that works? It's really simple. 
Uh, you can get these down on the battle map, so let's switch to the battle map. And I'm going to go ahead and restore the Jabari Militia to their full fighting strength. I'm sure they'd appreciate that, as well as Tylee's 164 HP. Why don't you put you back in New Axor and you guys can go back to guarding thing. Uh, this is a quick and dirty abstraction of army units fighting on the world map. To basically resolve what's happening when your players are like, oh, how's this war go going between these forces? Uh, and for simplicity's sake, I always recommend like each unit is like 100 dudes. If your enemies explicitly, for whatever reason, you've written down there's like 120 death knights, then keep the 100 as a fighting force. And once they drop to like 80% of their hit points, restore their hit points to full and say the 20 reserve units come in and heal the unit by joining them. That's a pretty simple way to, uh, to work with that. All right, let's switch to the battle map here. And we got, uh, I don't want these actually. Okay, so we got Tylee and we have... Uh, we have some orcs. We don't want any music. Uh, all right. So we got some orcs. We got one orc. Well, didn't I say it was like 100? Okay, so how do we do 100? Uh, 50 by 50. So uh, there's one orc. Uh, it needs to be 10. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, that's a little ungainly, don't you guys think? All right. So you probably don't want to do that. You want to stop like this at a 5x5. Five five. So this token represents 25 orcs, right? Because an orc is a 5x5 five five man, and so that's uh, one orc. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And when you measure like this, you have to measure from like off the thing, because it messes with me. It really does. So here's your token. It represents 25 orcs, and... Uh, each orc has 15 hit points, so you take 15 times 25 guys. Uh, this mob has 375 hit points. Bam! All right, cool. And there's 100 of them, so there's four groups. Yeah, there's four groups of 25 each. All right, cool. So we got Tylee here, and we got our orcs. And in this case, you basically run it again the exact same way. An edge of the formation attacks, and the ones immediately behind them take the help action, and the ones behind them are held in reserve. So these 25 orcs versus Tylee here, the orcs have a javelin attack and a great X attack. So they could advance to her, and the five orcs represented on the edge here, uh, they attack with advantage as the five behind help them. They crit for like the worst roll possible. That's hilarious, actually. Uh, but this is fine for illustration purposes. So that's 7 damage times 5 orcs attacking. So she takes 35 damage from that attack. And then Tylee might... Uh, you, would roll, you would roll initiative for this, by the way, uh, once you get down on a battle map like this. Uh, but this is how I handle hordes of weaker units on a battle map. Uh, it, it works really well, and it's, it's really fair. It's a good balance between the threat of a buttload of dudes attacking you and also your ability to feel heroic and actually stand up against like a whole crowd of people if 20 if 100 orcs all throw javelins at tylee let's say 100 of these guys throw javelins at tylee then that is 100 d20 okay so no matter what tylee's armor class is uh, we got one two three four i would have expected mathematically five but that is four critical hits and my group plays with the lingering injury table where when you get crit you take a lingering injury and the ones that are really gross are uh, a one a two a three yeah one a two a three that's lose an eye lose an arm or a hand lose a foot or a leg so four critical hits that's four d20s let's just see yep there we go tylee just lost one of her eyes from that you literally get your body blasted apart when fighting against an army that just fishes for crits. Uh, I'm sure a lot of these attacks also hit her. But resolving all that would take forever. And it's way easier to just say, five of these guys attack, five behind, help for you so you attack with advantage, and then they attack their, they get their attack in, and then you multiply that number, the damage number, by how many attacked. All right, but let's say Tylee goes, and she's going to fireball these guys. So a fireball is a 20-foot radius sphere so she could probably just drop it like right there and hit the whole group drop a fireball on them tylee at this point i think we'll put tylee on my second monitor the orcs deck save as a group uh that's a failure there's 25 orcs the fireball did 28 damage to each of them the horde of orcs takes 700 damage 
surprising absolutely nobody, uh, the entire group of orcs is killed. So she just killed 25 guys in one move there. Uh, so I strongly suggest you grab like some sort of token. Uh, you can go and if you're doing roll 20, you just do like coin or something. Uh, you can grab like a coin, some random coin artwork. Uh, you could grab, you could type in fire. Uh, you could grab some sort of freely available like fire artwork here and drag it in. Any of these like generic looking crystals or orbs make good markers. Yeah, let's say you have like a 40 foot radius sphere of death that your spell generates. You can just use that as a quick marker, a, bla a blast template. They're called they're called blast templates, I believe. So that would hit all this group, all this group as an example, and then it would not hit like this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on this group, it's 25 orcs minus seven dudes. That's eight. It would hit 18 of that group. Uh, and if and if you're in roll 20 and you lose track of that, you can literally just come in here and do like a one eight. So as you're resolving these, you could be like, oh yeah, it was 18 on this one. Uh, that's uh, you click on this and you press the press a number key, and it'll change little numbers on these these tokens. So let's say she does something that's not going to kill the entire group. Uh, how about a lightning bolt? Lightning bolt's pretty easy. It is literally just a a 60 foot line. So she throws out a fifth level lightning bolt right to here. If you hold down shift, the thing will stay, and we can just count one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Call it six, guys. You can be generous. So that's six. Uh, they're going to fail that. They, I don't think they have a hope of... Uh, so all six guys save as a group. Yeah, they failed. So that's six times 40. That's 240 damage. So that horde of guys takes 240 damage. All right, so there you go. Uh, this group that had a HP pool of 375. They have 135 HP left, divided by 15 HP per orc. They actually only have nine orcs left. So you could just take this and say, there's nine orcs left, so now they're a horde of nine dudes. You see what I just did? It's really easy. And now the three here attack, and the three behind them take the help action. So if they attack with like their great axe, that hits for 14, and that represents three attacks, so it's 14 times three, and that would have done 42 damage to Tylee. So you can do hordes of nine dudes, like a horde of 12 dudes, 15 dudes. It is it is a little more fair to the players because, like, realistically, a horde of, of 12 could instead do something like this. So a horde of 12 dudes is, you know, 1, 2, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. You could do something like this. Like, they form a firing line. And six of them attack, while the six behind help. Uh, you can do that. I typically don't. Uh, that What that does is, like, so if you do this, one orc attacks without advantage. Uh, it's the advantage behind them that kind of reflects the improved damage. So here is a horde of four orcs, two attack, two take the help action. So four guys doubles the damage and attacks with advantage. And then nine guys, three times the damage... With advantage like you would expect 12 orcs to be 12 times as effective against the player but it's four orcs attacking with advantage uh it's more like eight and if you scale this up like to some really big group like this you could i wouldn't get this big i would try to limit the size you might want to stop at like 25 because if you do 25 it's nice increments to do four groups of 25 is 100 man it'll it'll speed up your game so much like i really mean it if you ever run big combats you can get this stuff resolved so fast um my first players from patreon were they said they were really impressed they're like how do you run combat so fast and i was like i just i just get it done i just come up with you know my systems and i was like you know what i have all these little micro systems i've made tricks to how to resolve stuff really fast i was like i should make videos about this but check this out this is old me Zombie Horde. All right, here's a here's a custom made token, and this is a zombie horde. And if you've ever seen a swarm monster in D and D, come on, roll twenty. I'm making a video. Hurry up. There we go. Yes, swarm of kippers, rats, ravens, rot grubs, sloths, spiders, wasps. So they they all have like these swarm mechanics, you know, where if the swarm has more than a certain amount of HP, they do one thing, and if they have less than an HP, they do another thing. Um, they're basically more effective the more are in the swarm. But yeah, I made a custom token that represents, you know, nine zombies that have 22 hit points each. And they have, like, all these swarm mechanics. 
Uh, vulnerable to AoE, the zombie horde takes double damage from sources that can target more than one creature. Vulnerable to turn, destroy undead. You know, they count as their actual zombie selves. And this is not bad. If you want to make a custom token where it just counts as one token, y you can do that. But man, I tell you, you could easily just do the same thing if you just grabbed uh, some zombies. Where are some zombies? Okay, what? I'll just grab some skeletons, whatever. Like, the same thing, right? Like, this is the same thing. You take, here's your 25 skeletons, and, you know, five skeletons shoot with a short bow while the five behind take the help action. So with advantage, that is 18 to hit, uh, 35 damage, right? Done. Done. That's it. That's 25 skeletons have just taken their turn. And there's some in reserve to keep the swarm going, you know? It's so easy. So don't be afraid to grab some of these lower CR enemies and just drag their token up and be like, yeah, that's 25 of them now. All right. So I have a lot of house rules that have stood the test of time over the years that I've, I've added to my like DM Bible personal thing. And, and, and I would like to do a video about each one of them. Uh, some of the shorter ones, maybe a shorter video. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, if you want to join the people here, we got Delanian characters. Uh, a lot of people have already signed up to play D&D &D using Discord and Roll20. Um, if you have a decent microphone, and 20 bucks to spare a month, that's enough for five sessions as a follower. Uh, that's basically $4 a session. Go check out uh, patreon.com slash vex. Uh, check out the uh, $20 tier is where it starts. There are higher tiers if you want them for, to play even more sessions. But uh, yeah, I can be your DM, and you can join the Delania campaign. The people that have signed up already are having a lot of fun. And that's my service that I do, professional DMing service. Uh, it's the other thing I do besides making maps and videos. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope you are no longer intimidated at running huge groups of low-level critters. And yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, yeah 25 skeletons are over here. Uh, over here is like nine zombies, and another group of nine zombies is over there. And they're fighting They're fighting 25 orcs from the, the Sawtooth clan who have come to aid you because of the honor duel that you won and blah, 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 blah. It's great. You can just do all this stuff. It's great for world map resolution too when you want to track like armies and stuff on a world map. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like. Please subscribe so that you can see when I release new videos. And if you actually want to see when I release new videos, click the bell icon because subscribe doesn't actually do anything anymore. The, the new subscribe button is apparently the bell icon. Thanks, YouTube, I guess. All right, until next time, as always, take it easy.